pretty much over the last seven, eight years, I've spent every single day from 8 a.m. Eastern to the end of the day trying to find the next big runner. That's all I've really done. They were really short sell, uh, very, very, I've been very, very focused on pretty much that one thing for a really, really long time. So my goal right now is to show you just one pattern, okay? And I'm not the biggest fan of that kind of mentality because there isn't one pattern that's gonna just make you money over time um, without some significant losses and other things as the markets are always shifting, the patterns are always changing. But I found over the course of my career and specifically over the last four months or so of working with students, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, which has been a shift I've made. I have learned a lot about what everyone is struggling with. Same sort of things, just different forms. And most of the time it comes down to psychology, trading psychology. So most of what we are going to talk about in this is trading psychology. It's a little bit of psychology behind the charts, why I believe this pattern I'm going to show you, while it doesn't work every day, all day, it is the epitome of what I look for when I'm looking for risk reward within the setup and something that is repeatable over time where I'm not going to lose a shit ton of money, right? And where I can have confidence. And there are many, many reasons for that, most of it being the psychology, right? The psychology behind the trading for me, how it feels, and then the psychology of the masses in the areas that you guys are trading in now. Key levels, high a day, uh, BWAP, breakouts, multi-day breakouts, all of these sort of levels. We're gonna kind of get into why. I think we'll illustrate with a few charts quickly and that will segue into a quick psychological discussion and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. So I'm not gonna, like I said, I'll take too much of your time, but we are gonna get started here. This is Gavin Crab Reversal. I've been teaching it for a long time, for a really long time. The one thing that I see that most traders, especially newer traders, but the ones who aren't profitable and trying to long, right? Trying to long listed stocks in particular, is that most of you are gonna fall prey to the fact that every single strategy out there that you're gonna learn, and that's, I, I started there too, like I learned someone and so-and-so strategies. But most of the ones that I learned just ended up being hit or miss, no matter what. And I knew a lot of it was because of the markets, but I realized over time and working with students in my own trade, that a lot of it just had to do with that I'm doing the same thing everyone else is doing. I'm trying to trade the same strategies and everyone fails at this game, to the long side especially. So that's kind of the idea behind this. It actually started with, I started trading the same as you guys, which was chasing highs a day, uh, chasing breakouts, chasing pretty much everything. Zero risk reward, no clue where I'm gonna cut unless the trade money gets me, but I've kept me safe for a long time. But no idea where I'm gonna sell either. So there's kind of a specific set of problems that are gonna happen with most, most long strategies with NASDAQs that I've been really able to help students shift away from. And my goal right now is to give you that right now, okay? A lot of you probably like short selling. You know, some of my boys here are amazing short sellers as well. And this may help you too, kind of understand how I look at it. Because when I'm looking at these charts, I'm looking at it, you're not thinking about you guys, thinking about short sellers. Think about dilution, where does that take place? Think about supply and demand in key areas of the charts. I'm thinking if I had a million shares to dump on this stock today, where would I dump it? How would I dump it? What do I need to dump it? All those sorts of things, right? So initially I would buy breakouts, right? I would try high day breaks. In fact, I would not get excited looking at a chart nor see a setup until it was approaching high of day at any point. Pre-market highs, high of day. Those two levels would get me so excited to press buttons, right? I'm gonna get in this thing because it's going up, it's gonna keep going up, and that is what everyone thinks. It's a greedy thing. And you're never thinking where exactly am I gonna sell it because a lot of times if you look at these charts, you, kept, you couldn't tell me what a key level is that you were gonna sell. A lot of the charts that I trade are illiquid for a very long period of time, and then they come into play. Why do I trade these? Because they are they have potential to become the biggest percent gainer of the day on any given day. All I do to scan when I'm looking for stocks is I have very, very low requirement. All right, anyone who's saying this is the magic scan, any proprietary shit is totally, it's all bullshit in my opinion. It's just marketing. It's just buy this scan, buy this proprietary crap that's gonna find you what you need. 
that's not the case. The case for me is that I have very low volume requirements, I have very low requirements in my scan, and I see everything. I'm only saying that because I have seen the top percent gainers and what they look like in for some years every single day. And the problem is, is that that point is also the most dangerous point in that stock to be trying to long these terrible, terrible stocks, okay? It gets back to supply and demand. If I have shares to dump, where would I dump them? So let's get into, quickly, just a few charts to illustrate this, okay? The one thing that I'll say for most of you who have been trying to long and it hasn't worked for you is that you can figure out how to sell it at those spots, you are going down the right road, okay? And we're talking about just the daily action. This sort of mentality for me pretty much cuts across all my strategies, but on first green day gathers, right? We got SBFT here, a uh, week ago or so, two weeks ago. Don't know what the news is, but they gapped up from 64 cents to a double of 40 uh, after hours. Pull back to about a buck, nice buck hold, another push. All I'm doing when we get in the pre-market, I want to see a gap, and then if it spikes, I ignore it, okay? I don't like trading the first 10 minutes of the day or so most of the time. If it spikes out the gate, I ignore it. What gets me excited when I'm looking to long a stock is weakness. And it feels weird because it's a fearful youth. You're full of fear. I get it. When stocks are going down, if you're trading like everyone else trades, impulsively, and through your emotion, which is when it's going up, it's good, and you feel good, and when it's going down, it's bad, and you feel bad. That's not what I look at. I look at when it's going down, as long as it matches a lot of other requirements for me, that I, there is more and more and more upside the lower it goes on my single. This is how this works for me. Uh, we get a gap. You can see the gap here. There's the crab out the gate. Did have a tiny little spike. High of day, out the open. That becomes super important to me right now. All right, we're gonna keep this so, so, so. When I get a pool in the morning, I'm looking for some sort of pre-market or after hour support, generally speaking, to start working off of. When I'm looking at levels in the morning that I may be dip buying off of, all right? So I don't just sit there and buy when it dips. I'm looking for key levels that I may be able to use and then I'm watching tape, I'm watching time at sales. But ultimately the goal is for me to get as close to the lows as possible. And it's a game where when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I don't mess with it because if I feel like I found a low day, I cut. But when it does work, the most important thing to me here is that I get great risk reward back to high day, back to view out, and then back to pre-market highs. Whatever order that those three come in, pre-market highs, high a day, view out. All three are targets to me. So every spot that y'all are buying, because you get excited at those levels when it breaks through those, I am selling at those levels. Not only am I selling at view out in the morning when I play this pattern correctly, but I'm getting one to four, one to five, one to 10, to whatever my first target is. One to five minimum I try to get. And I'm looking at risk reward, okay? So in this case, SVFD, um, we're looking at a low about a bug of five, and we're looking at a high day of $1.30. So in order for me to get one to five, I need to make like 25 cents or so to risk five cents. If I have five cents risk, I get 25 cents. I can buy 108 or so for that five cents of risk off of low of day. That's generally speaking the case. And then by the time it gets to view app, I should be taking at least a part of my, my profits. When it gets to pre-market highs, I should be selling there. I sell in and out of them. My best trading occurs exactly like this. And the idea is, the more and more I've seen it over the last couple of years that, that we've gotten, the big volume tickers in particular, whether or not they're low floats, we've seen a lot of algorithmic trading. We've seen the patterns get distorted. We've seen a lot of levels that you believe are gonna hold, they take them out when you're long. So anyone who's dipped behind backside after a big morning move, it can be very hit or miss, and they are looking to stop you out, and they are. How many times have you guys seen over the last year high up day break, slam, and then maybe a bounce at BWAP, but then they're gonna take BWAP out too. So if you were trying to risk BWAP, you're probably fucked. The only logical level of risk for me on these things in my head is low of day. Now, am I always in low of day? No, but that is generally speaking the idea in my head. I should be able to long this stock, uh, pass out, wake up tomorrow, and be okay. Now I'll be down 50% because I'm chasing shit through highs all the time. 
if you can make this one adjustment to the long side, um, it is a game changer, okay? So I look at it like this. First target, high day, VWAP, got to get a good risk reward to there. Then we get pre-market highs. If I can sell into that level two, that's better. And then we get hopefully a pre-market high day break like this. At that point, it's just playing price action and selling it to each pair of all and doing my best to hold on for the ride and size out. The beautiful part about this, and this is the pattern that I look for every single day. Okay, this is my bread and butter morning gap where I can trade this pretty much any day I want type of idea. But like in February through April, I'm sorry, March through May wasn't great. Okay, wasn't great. In other words, at this point here in the pattern, where you got back to high a day, exactly at this point for a very long period of time, it was getting stuffed. So there was no fall of fur. So it's a pattern that I can adjust simply through frequency of trading, not trading it when it's not working really well, or making sure that I'm getting good risk reward highs and selling quickly in the office to, to, to maintain what I'm trying to do. So this is a pattern that I look for at day two. If this level here is pulling back to yesterday's highs and had a parabola on day one, potential entry, D levels, okay? Other beauty about this, other beautiful part about this is the psychology behind what the trade feels like, okay? At first, when you guys try dip buying, if you're trying to find morning reversals and work off with lows instead of chasing through highs, because what is this game ultimately? Buy low, sell high, then it's a art. And people, we are so wired to not, we are so wired to not, it's psychological. But this really does flip the script and it always did on the head for me, which is in the morning, people are chasing morning spikes, people are waiting for high day breaks, and that is where they're going to buy. But the stocks that we trade are so fucked up, they dive in so much, they have so many shares to dump. What would you need? Someone tell me, what do you need to dump a shit ton of shares? Uh, liquidity. Liquidity. You have to have liquidity. Where on every single chart does the most volume come in that you see in small cap? Breakouts, highs of day, areas like that. I can tell you if I had a bunch of shares that nobody stopped, that's where I'd have it, right? Then you have every single emotional person on the planet behind high day breaks together, breakouts, 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 and then they all panic together. And then short sellers step in when they realize, hey, it's a false breakout. I have great risk reward here, it's on the outside, right? It's that whole dynamic. Same pre market highs, high of day, where do short sellers short? Who shorts a lot here? The rest of you are primarily longs? Okay, or just shy. Um, <laughs> so, so some of you just don't trade? Okay. <laughs> um, the, but that is the idea. The idea is that I want to know where short sellers are shorting because they are likely gonna create some pool at least. It may lead to squeeze, but it also may be the end. And I'm never trying to think further than that. If I can have breakers who work to my single, when it gets the free market highs, when it gets a high day, I'm sorry, pre market highs, whatever those levels are in break store, I just, I'm like, okay, I'll run. My singles to be well, my doubles to high a day, my triples to pre market highs, and I'm over on it. So, okay, we got a high day break. When do I sitting for high day breaks? When are hitting high day breaks? I don't complicate it. This is a very simple system that I that I tweak daily based on what happened yesterday, right? If the top percent meter yesterday was 50%, and now I'm trading a stock tomorrow that's up 70%, I'm not going to have that much hope for it. I need, to, I need to see my scans at the end of the day with stock for closing at 70, 80, 90%. Because I'm not going to try to fight yesterday's topic. Does that make sense? Um, that's been a big part of the adaptation. But this pattern alone has been um, pretty much a game changer for a lot of people in terms of the psychology. Like I said, when I'm buying lows, do you know what I am not doing? I am not chasing. Okay, I'm not, the, the stock is coming to me, everyone's fearful. Uh, generally speaking, volume has died down a bit after that morning run, right? That's the idea behind it. Um, it's a contrarian idea, everyone's scared. I don't get scared of getting sacked. Does that make sense? I really hope it does. Uh, everything that you guys think is good about longing and the spots that you're longing in the nap are actually just spots where you're impulsively buying it, regardless of what you think your risk is. Regardless of what you think your risk is. And the more I work with traders and speak with them a lot, the more I the more I realize it's not just how are you supposed to have good trading psychology when you're buying breakouts through highs a day and pre-market highs. Very emotionally charged parts of the chart 
how are you supposed to have sane psychology? How are you supposed to be trading systematic? And every time you enter, it's getting slapped super hard and you're down 10% out of nowhere and now you're trying to figure out yourself, okay? Really, really important to understand this. Um, a trading plan, a trading plan, right? This is an example of it. This is just an example. I want you to know where you're gonna buy it or short. I want you to know where you're gonna sell it or cover. Well, I didn't really believe in a price target early on, and a big part of that was because uh, trading tickers was like my Bible, it still is. But I've formed my own ideas since then, right? And one of those for me, especially if you're struggling to lock in an incident to cut losses, is your trading plan. Know exactly where you're going to sell. I know when I'm buying in the morning, I'm going to sell some in a VWAP. What does that do? It de-risks the trade to almost zero at times. A lot of times it does de-risk the trade to zero. So I don't mind not holding to the top. I'm just going to sell it to each level and then let the chips fall where they may. And then I move to the next trade. And I know that over the next thousand trades that that's going to take me forward. Okay. But just that idea of this is, is a big, big deal. So when you're buying it at a dollar twenty, I'm sorry. If you're trying to buy the bounce towards high day at a dollar twenty, I see inverse risk reward to high day. I see that as a chase right here. And some of you may be like, "What?" To me, you're chasing that. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Uh, because these are the principles I just try to apply to everything going forward. Let's see. That's going to kind of segue into the last little chart I want to talk about, which is this exact thing. Difficulties cutting losses. Difficulties taking profits. I've been speaking with so many people. We've been yet diving into a lot of psychology lately. And it is the main thing. It is up to you to set a stop and know where you want to cut. That is totally up to you. The buttons that we press and what makes us press them, our self-speak, Right? What are we saying to ourselves mid-trade via uh, our thoughts or whatever else it may be in chat? Um, what is keeping us, in other words, from trading objectively? Objectively seeing price action. I hear so many things, right? Money is one of the big, big ones. Everyone wants to make money, right? I get it. I understand that's why we trade, because we want to make money. But at a certain point, you come to the realization that is it, that need that want alone will keep you from making money at the markets, right? That's going to keep you from cutting losses if you're thinking about the money. It's going to keep you from taking profits. Sound enough. So everything I do, the strategies I try to trade, and then the way I'd like to think about them, every part of my process is designed to minimize that effect. If I don't know exactly where I want to sell a stock, how am I going to sell it there? And a lot of people tell me, when I get that question, uh, how do you know I'm, I'm trouble cutting losses or I don't let the winners run? You know, those are kind of the main things. I'm like, well, where were you going to sell? What was your plan? 99% of the time, people don't have it. Their kids tell me where they're going to sell it or buy it or cover whatever else it is. Much less what their first reward was and why it should work and what the key level they're using is. Y'all are just buying random dips and using the last previous dip as support, random trend lines, and random patterns. Uh, at the end of the day, from a macro perspective, all of these stocks that go up go all the way back down. And the higher that these things get, the more dangerous it is. Again, if something happened, my power went out, no Wi-Fi, I need to be able to come back and say it's not going to be at the bottom. And these days, for the last two years, it goes there. When they spike in the morning, they end up at low of day. Still, most of the time. So all the people who are like, the, you know, messing around and seeing things in the tape and doing certain things are getting screwed over. Now, does that change? Yes. The algorithms are changing. The price action changes. The markets change. So I've seen this pattern, like I say, go away completely. But then I've also seen it develop into other patterns, like more midday moves, where we still can get great risk reward. But at that point, I put a five minute chart. I have a bigger time frame that I'm looking at. The targets are the same. Everywhere where you guys want to buy it in the afternoon still becomes a target. So you can kind of understand that dynamic that I'm trying to separate myself from the 10% or I'm sorry, from the 90% of losing traders by doing exactly the opposite. Buying low, selling high. I've asked my son several, I show him a chart. Where can you make the most money on this chart, son? I did it at six years old, seven years old, and again, a couple weeks ago. 
same, same thing he showed me. Where's the least downside and the most upside on the worst stocks? If I'm trading this shit, I need the biggest risk reward possible. There's so much more that goes into this. It's just a pattern. It is my bread and butter pattern. And it's the rest of my process then that allows me to pick the next one. But at the end of the day, it's not very complicated. And then when I trade it, I keep it even less complicated for myself. In better markets, more size, more risk, more I, less sizing out into VWAP, into high a day, less sizing out and smaller frequencies. And then when that's not working, I let that, I let my PO tell me what to do. You know, if, I, if I'm pressing and I'm not selling fast enough, my PO will tell me that. And instead of waiting for pre market highs or even high of day, I'm selling all of it prematurely into VWAP and calculating risk reward off of that. Does that make sense to everyone? Obviously, for me, the power behind thinking like this and understanding the value of dip buying and understanding that the faster and the the more range that these things fall, the more potential on the signal for you to get an amazing trade. I can't tell you how many traders hit me up after they try this and they're like, oh my God. Like, I cannot believe I've ever been doing anything outside of this sort of idea, at least in terms of buying stocks. This does not include sympathy plays, etc. cetera. We mentioned there's a lot of other things I do where I have made a lot of money over time, but this is every day I can do it or at least come to the market with this sort of idea on gappers. Because I can make money no matter what. If at the end of the day I went to lower days, I can still have a 10, 15, 30 minute period to make money to the long side in the morning, right? Um, the confidence that comes behind understanding the power of getting great risk reward on your trades, and then the control that goes behind this. When I know exactly where I'm gonna sell, know exactly where I want to sell when it's going up and down, it gives me so much more of a chance to execute. If I don't, execution, I don't know. If I, if I at any time I take a trade the willy nilly risk, where it's like I don't know exactly and have a firm plan for it, those are always the most dangerous times for me, specifically if I have socks. Because that is when you get that deer in headlights moment, where you're like, oh shit, and then you're coming up with a plan because you're down, that's emotion. That's what I'm trying to remove. I'm not perfect at it. But this at least has given me a very specific framework in which to operate risk reward on gappers every day, regardless of what's going on. Okay? And it's given me a system in which to moderate where I'm going to sell, how many I'm going to sell. And when I'm wrong, I just use that information to do better on the next one because it tells me maybe the market's not right. Uh, maybe it was this specific copy, maybe it was just the dilution, whatever else it was. But I'm going to use that information for the next trade and the next trade and it just keeps on flowing. There's no, when I'm taking these trades, there's no fear. You know, there's no fear. In fact, the cuts, the first thing I do when I place these trades is open my sell order. It's the very first thing I do. I got my finger on the trigger to make sure there's no excuse. You know, because oftentimes, if I'm playing lows and I'm wrong, it's not low a day, my thesis is, is wrong. However, so many times I will see, I'm so close to actually being in maybe the next leg down, or it may be a bear trap for the lowest, and on range and stuff like that. But it's been it's been um, it's been a game changer. I promise. The psychology behind it. You know, everyone wants to read the books on psychology, and they're trying to fix their trading psychology. But where you enter, you're trading in shitty psychological areas of charts, anyways, to the long side. That's why these work so great for shorts. Where are shorts shorting? The good ones at the highs. Some of them short weakness backside on a predictable backside. Okay. But I'm just doing the opposite, okay? I am buying low and selling high. It's an art. And the main art about it is rewiring your psychology to understand this concept. To understand this concept. Um, outside of that, a lot of you probably are not as far away as you think. You know, I get calls. Speak to people all the time who are just a shit show because they took one loss where they had, you know, they tried this strategy for a week or two weeks and it's not working and they're not making money and they get so frustrated. I understand that. But this all comes back to that money thing. It's not about money. If you don't have a profitable process right now, it's about developing that. It's about developing the ability to risk $20 to make $80, $100 repetitively over and over and over again with the system and then understand I need to go where I'm going to buy. I'm going to sell and what the reasons are for that. And 
And then letting the experience and the time play out. You know, seeing, for those of you who've been trading years, I'll even trade the breakouts and highs and stuff like that. It is gonna be difficult for you to change those neurological connections in your brain to understand that that is what is keep holding you back from making money in the markets in the first place, okay? If you can understand you need to sell exactly where you're buying, that needs to be where you should be sizing out shares. You were just completely removing yourself from the flock of sheep and you just all, and no matter what you say, what your risk is, it's still gonna be impulsive. It's almost impossible to not chase high day race, at least a penny, two pennies, five pennies. And every single day I watch high day breaks and I watch mint slams and I watch a bunch of news lose money. And hopefully I'm selling my last shares into that panic too. I'm panicking now, but just maybe my last shares, okay? Um, I've always felt like the sizing out portion is another big, big psychological tool for those who don't do it. I size out more than I size in, generally speaking. And again, it's de-risking the trade when I size out into key levels. It's a VWAP, a high day. You can look at a few more of these really fast. Look at this. Here's the other one, same idea. I look at charts like this. You guys see entries here, right? I don't. I see that exit. I see... What <coughs> it I see pre-market highs at 78 cents. I see a little bit of resistance here, maybe. And then I see a high of day here, right? And all of the entry is based off lows, okay? There's not great pre-market support to work off of, but when I'm working this, high of day, VWAP would be first target, high of day second target, pre-market highs third target. Now this is only 55 cents stock, and the tendency would be, at least in the past, that been cheaper stocks, I could get a little bit as they fair with the risk because it's only, it's so cheap. You know, especially like with 10 and 9, 8 cents out, so they're trying to get sides. But when the, when the price is cheaper, it becomes even more important that I'm nailing it down. My entries and my risk reward, getting a penny risk, two pennies risk, three pennies risk, all close today, you get like five, six, seven, back, whatever it is. And keep your perspective correct. So this, these charts are not necessarily perfect. You know, they rarely are, but you can see double bottom, Targets for meaning PWAP, high day, break market highs. Sell into them, and if you can hold on for longer, then great. But go to the end of the day, okay? It didn't even take till the end of the day. 12.30, my 12.30 back to lows, back to low a day. Every time. And then sometimes, oftentimes, you're gonna see low a day try to hold. So, worst case scenario, if I'm playing off low a day and I'm gonna swing it, you can see like a chart like this, we broke down a couple pennies by the end of the day. Um, it's always going to react to the day these stops. Okay? I'm not saying this is the only way to trade. All I wanted to do is illustrate for you a couple of things about trading psychology in particular. Uh, hopefully kind of help you guys have some different ideas of risk reward uh, and some different ideas on how to get really, really great risk reward and value from your trades. We cannot forget these are the shittiest stocks on the planet. If you're trading small cap, they're small cap for a reason. And I've been seeing increasingly more and more and more toxic dilution. And Vertical knows uh, some really, really bad things going on, which is why we, we, we continue to see these stocks go from like three to like 10 cents a minute, okay? And then do a split because it's just kind of a crazy environment. So understand what you're messing with. Understand that if you're chasing in highs and you lack control of yourself anyways, you are putting yourself at extreme risk of every trade, no matter what you're telling yourself because these things can yank, okay? And even if you're setting stops and stuff like that, you can get, get a lot of slippage when everyone's panicking, right? The whole point about when I'm dip buying in the morning is hopefully everyone's pretty much panicked and the morning shorts are covering. So there are a lot of people who just short the gap in the morning. The biggest gap is they're gonna be short in it, they're gonna be using the highs and free market highs. All of these things go up into these different levels. And that's how I look at key levels. That's why I don't look at any other levels other than low a day, high a day, free market highs to keep up. All right? And if you can do that and have sort of a systematic, not sort of, but a very systematic approach of playing, getting great risk reward within those levels, that will give you a super solid foundation. I promise you, the cutting losses is no big deal when I realize, take a, take a little paper cut, take a little paper cut, one to five, one to 10. Take a little paper cut, take a little paper cut, one to five, one to 10. 
Some weeks are amazing. Some months are amazing from this pattern, where you are literally playing these massive 100, 200, 300 percent runners, and you're in them when they're 20 or 30 percent out. Because where I'm messing within the chart, at the end of the day, no month, no matter what, there wasn't a better entry. Unless you're buying pre-market stocks, like bring it early. All right. So that's kind of been the idea for me. And you know the funniest part about this idea is it spawned early on. Like, I wish I could just like buy the bonds at the charts. But people say, people frown on it. People say, don't buy it or view it. Don't buy a falling knife, which I do agree with that. It's different just breathing, like, going panic than having ideas and seeing price level, price level set up and half price action and all that good stuff. So, okay. But because of this number one, I just was buy pre for so long. Okay. And I'm not saying they don't work. And I know personally know a lot of people who trade momentum and breakouts really well. But for me, and if you're not profitable trading them, because you're not in control of what you're doing, or you don't have the discipline over the patience, or maybe it's just out for you, try this. Okay? I think it's I think it uh, at least will be another tool in your arsenal. Because I still trade breakouts, guys. You know, I still trade them. But I would much prefer rather I prefer not to if I don't have to. I would rather be playing the morning, like a morning dip and then into some kind of key breakout level was like pre-market highs or something like that. And then I'm playing the breakout level from below you guys. That's always the goal. Get it before the sheep, get it before all of you are impulsively behind it, and then sell it to you there. And if I can do that, I stay in the 10%. And if I can't, I'll join you in the night, right? So that's always my goal. It's an art, buying low, selling high. I'm not always perfect at it, but I protect myself. And that's kind of the main thing I wanted to get through to you guys. You can't have great trading psychology, trading in a really, really crappy psychological areas of the chart, just in my opinion. Unless that's their thing, you know? Unless you like unless you like that sort of thing, you know? But for me, I don't. I, after doing this and trading in this sort of mentality where it's just controlled and chill, I don't feel a need. I don't, every time I break out, I have the same thing. I'm like, fuck, dude, here we go. It's gonna test the breakout level, it's gonna hurt. Like, where do I even sell it? I don't know. I gotta go back in the daily, find some obscure level from like three years ago. It's always like five or seven, five or seven points up. That sort of idea. So that's the idea. If you can just figure that out, it will at least kind of change your trajectory a little bit in black Um Outside of that, hard fucking perk, man. You know, I speak with a lot of people who Tell me that they're working hard and tell me that they have something going on and really at the end of the day, it's just lip service, okay? You gotta really dive into your data, dive into your group, your network, you know, the Flipper Network, fucking awesome, amazing group of people here, could not be in better hands. And so really dive into your, into your community. It really helps to help people. Uh, Jack actually, uh, during one of my boot camps at one point, did a guest speech and mentioned that I hadn't thought of it that way, but help people who are worse than you, it helps you. You know, find people who are better than you, find people of equal training skill at the moment, and and they'll push forward together, right? So that's that's the main thing. You have to rewire yourselves how you think. Great is not good to me, when I'm, unless I'm long already, okay? I've been long. I don't like to chase, I don't like strong stocks, but I'm buying them. The whole idea is buying them when they're weak and selling them, they're strong. And there's an art to it, but I promise you, it means chasing for high day. That's all I really got you guys. Um, I'll be around. Again, thank you guys so much for having me. I hope you guys got some, something from my speech, and we'll definitely spend some time over the next couple of days getting to know each other. So, everyone take care, work hard. Thanks for having me. Love you.